Thank you. 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 Thank
existing DRB members, but um, Don Blake will now be um, <clears throat> moved from an alternate to a member of the DRB for a four year term is what we're proposing. And Melissa, ooh, I always get her name. Last LeBlanc. Name. LeBlanc. LeBlanc. I couldn't read my own writing. Um, would move from uh, being a DRB member to, as an alternate. So the DRB member term is four years, the alternate is a one year term. <clears throat> a what? Oh, it's unlimited? I think you said it was one. Okay. No, they're, oh. they're, 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 Alternate is no unlimited. Oh. Uh, no term. Yeah. Oh, I'm so gr I'm glad I okay. worked with both of them. I'm thrilled that she's uh, willing to stay no on as term. alternate. She's very knowledgeable. So do we need to make a motion? So to... we would make a motion to appoint Donnie Blake to a four-year term on the DRB and <clears throat> Melissa LeBlanc for an, um, no term limit. Right. I'll make the motion to um, appoint Donnie Blake uh, for the four-year term of DRB and Melissa LeBlanc as the um, alternate alternate at with no term. No term. I right. second that. All right. So there's a motion and a second. Any um, any debate? All right. Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Um, the next agenda item is to select, set the select board meeting schedule. Mm -hmm. So I was tasked with a, um, reaching out to the school. Um, the assistant to the superintendent said that they can't change their meetings this um, right now, um, mid, mid school year, but that they have I had a follow up question for them, so they have a retreat in July and they would consider changing their meeting schedule if it's possible. Oh. I know they have like four different boards or maybe five entities, I don't know. There was a lot, so they said they would um, consider it. They didn't give me an indication either way, but that they would consider changing the meetings, the meeting date. So perhaps with that in mind, um, we could consider uh, keeping the select board regular meeting on days as the first and third Mondays at 530 and we'll see if the school in July is um, interested in changing their schedule. Which will work because I mean usually the select board does its organizational um, policy setting in the spring so you'll know well in advance um, whether or not you'd like to consider it right. in the spring. Would um, somebody like to make a motion? Um, yeah, I'll make a motion that we set the select board meeting schedule for the first and third Monday of each month starting at 530. Okay, and is there a second? I'll second. Okay, is there any discussion? Um, has anyone reached out to uh, George or um, Don regarding how they feel about, does that work for their schedules? Um, I have not, I did not reach out to them. Okay. I mean, I get the packet now. <clears throat> True. Okay. With, with the notes. Did I say that though? Yes. So they were aware. No one reached out to me and said they had any discussion. Disliked the I, current plan. Okay. I, I do think that it's pretty important to have to give everyone the opportunity to, to attend all the meetings that they so desire to attend. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I think it'd be in, in our best interest as a town to really work toward agree. Mm -hmm. figuring out a way to make the schedules all work for everybody. Well, hopefully the school will come to the same conclusion. Yeah. Yep. All right. So um, we would entertain a motion to, you know, oh, you mean, I'm sorry. Okay. So in Laura's second, all right, excuse me. Um, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Uh, that's unanimous. Thanks. Wallen Road Bridge update. Yes, so we have a couple gentlemen from the, I have not met you before, I know Tyler, but if you could come up to the front um, and the reason we have this project on our agenda is um, it's been talked about for a number of years, I've heard. Uh, maybe Tyler can give a brief project history. Um, oh, and pictures. Nice. I'm going to give you the mic over there. Are you going to stand over there? Uh, no, 
Um, hi, Tyler Mumley, uh, Mumley Engineering, and uh, for at least a couple years, we've been uh, working with the town to come up with a, a solution for Walton Road Bridge. Um, it was listed on the needs repair or reconstruction list for the state, and we, we knew it to be so, and so it was, it was on the list to, uh, for the town to, to work on. And um, so we worked through design and um, worked with the state and worked through bidding process. And uh, so last year, the project was awarded uh, to Blow and Cody. And so they are going to start working on it uh, this year. And so um, what we want to do is have <coughs> Mark and Nathan, Sorry. or Nate, you going to come up next? Come up and talk about uh, just the process overview. And also Kevin is here because the town is going to play a, um, a role as far as traffic maintenance and such goes as well. And then um, I'll be staying involved with the project for uh, just engineering oversight and input as well. So I will, I hate to steal your thunder, but so one of the reasons we're here is because the road is going to be closed. Many people have talked about it, but I just want it clear before we get into the details that people are aware where this, this requires road closure for a number of months, a couple, maybe three, three, yeah, three, 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 three safe. Yeah. Just want to be realistic and you know, okay. it's not a couple week project. No, and so we're planning on starting it around April 15th since, and of course, we didn't know the weather was going to do what it is, and so <laughs> we get a little bit earlier start on it. Okay. And I'm sorry, what's just, your name? I'm Nathan Cody for Blue Cody. Thank you. And two years ago, we put a steel plate in so that there's not a giant hole in the bridge now. Mm -hmm. So the plan is to get started on it, and the detour has already been set up with the town, and the bus route will have to just figure it out. I don't know. I'm not on that part. Mm -hmm. But the plan is we'll get in and get out and have a new bridge, basically. So you're planning on uh, starting on or around April 15th, is that correct? Correct. Perfect. You say it's going to take about three months, so. Right. All goes well. We'll it'll be reopened in July, maybe. That's the no plan. That's good. That's <laughs> over. Yeah. That's on our plan, but it's after the eclipse and before Fourth of July. <laughs> yeah, hopefully that doesn't affect us. <laughs> so, what, what's your detour, Nathan? Is it going to be yeah. up Cody Hill and back around to the other side? Is it, I think so. Oh, that's sorry. Kevin's right. department. Yeah, so. But yes, I believe that's the, the route. Okay. And locals that know the other way will go. They can go there. All right, perfect. Uh, Kevin, do you want to speak to the detours and anything in terms of the town? Uh, Kevin Barrows, Highway Superintendent. Uh, so yes, the detour is up Cody Hill, down Fontaine. The road will be blocked um, just past the White House before the bridge. So you can't go any further, but there'll be detour signs up at the bottom of Fontaine and, and Walton. There'll also be detours at Mud City Loop and Walton Road, and then back on Cole Hill, back down that's a good one. Let's see, Luke. That's yeah, a good one, Bill. Right. That's right. That's another yeah. good one. Um, so there'll be we'll have detour signs all the way around, as well as bridge closure signs. Um, the first day of April, we're printing up two informational signs on both ends of the bridge, so that people will realize that it's being closed on April fifteenth, and with a projected date of about three months out, whatever that figures of reopening. Judy, does this um, trigger a? Do we have to put a notice Thank in the you. newspaper? Is that you know how we we don't notice from the have town? To but, we can. House, but we can. Yeah. yeah. And also too yeah. is um, I think W's um it's the radio station. Yeah, yeah. WLVB. Yeah, WLVB yeah. or whatever that is. Yeah. I think that they'll do a um public notice. Um yeah. like a public PSA. service announcement. Like a public service announcement. Yeah. 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 If I get them the information as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll put it up on the website. And the way that the website works right now, um we have the news and notices and if residents sign up for that they'll automatically get it but the That's way it's good. set up right now is that uh, any general news that we put out announcements we can push it to all subscribers yeah that's great um, so i'll get it out to all subscribers on uh, 
for the uh, agendas and minutes. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm thinking in terms of businesses and stuff, the deliveries that, are, you know, the newspaper might be a... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you should share it with anyone and everyone. I mean, it's another reason to sign up for those notices. Yeah, yes. that's great. Absolutely. And if you could... Post office. Yeah. Um, at a school, we should actually. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and then somebody should reach out to the farmers as far as. Their milk trucks. Their stuff. milk trucks. Yeah, that go that route. Um, I know that was a concern at one of our last meetings. Mm -hmm. We talked about this last year. Somebody had mentioned it, so that might not be a bad idea. Huh. Okay, does anyone have any questions for our experts? Yeah, Jerry. Jerry Throne. Uh, so um, I believe this is a partial superstructure replacement in that it's only the concrete uh, deck uh, portion, the girders, the stringers are remaining. Great. Yes. Okay. So um, is there a plan in place for once you remove the, uh, the deck uh, that if the uh, uh, the steel beams are in uh, worse shape than what you figure on that uh, what 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 the plan would be for uh, addressing that. Um, I mean, the plan would be that at the time of, of that happening, when they have it cleared, we'll, we'll take a look at it. And if those steel beams are worse off than we think they are, then we'll have to address it at that point in time. OK, so, so it, we don't, I mean, we don't have uh, we don't have you know, steel girders. On backup right now, like waiting, waiting to be installed. Right. But, but, there was a there was an original plan uh, to remove the entire structure and put back. Uh, right. New items, but you know, that was that was scrapped because of the, the cost and complexity of it. So, are are these rolled uh, uh, beams or are they uh, fabricated? Uh, the existing ones. The existing ones are rolled. They're rolled. So you you would be able to determine the size and uh, determine whether or not those uh, beams are readily available and when the next rolling is at the steel mill to try to figure out if you need to replace the beams, you could get in on the rolling list. Um, I suppose we could. It's going to be probably three to six months. Right. Conservatively. Right. Okay, so I'm just suggesting that's something that be looked into yeah. Yeah. so yeah. that uh, uh, month from now, two months from now, when uh, the beams are uh, exposed, that um, if they need to be replaced, or portions of them, that uh, <coughs> uh, at least you're not starting from uh, from ground zero, and you already know uh, where to get the beams and how long it'll take. Is, the, uh, is there an option for reinforcing or sistering them? Or I mean, there are like, sections and it's, it's yeah, there are repairs that we can do. We also happen to in our yard have beams that are the same size oh. that are used. So if it comes to that, we hmm. literally have one in our yard. So cool. Yeah. There's that. Can we put our name on it? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. That would be great. Mo Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyone else have any questions? Just not a question, but keep me in the loop because I need to get financing. So just keep me in the loop for schedule payment. So that takes a whole lot of time. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Do you have a question? Do you have something? To... Over the years, I'm Mark. If you could come, this is for our, our fans online. Uh, over the years, with your previous administrators, um, I've talked to Dan Lindley several times. Mm -hmm. I've talked to Eric Dodge several times. Your infrastructure is your bridges. It's a big deal in Mooresville. You've got some big ones because. Walton Road is 84 feet long. Miller Bridge over the Ryder Brook is 84 feet long. They were all built at the same time. Cody Hill is a much shorter bridge, but it's crooked as a devil. And that will need upgrading at some point in time. It's a matter of fact, they're all past due. 
uh, by about 30 years. And uh, Cadiz Falls Bridge is going to be coming up, I'm pretty sure, for some more repairs. Um, and it's big bucks. And you guys have had a hard time getting budgets passed and all that. But if all those bridges get closed, you guys are in a pickle. And a, a little bit goes a long way, but you've gone past your little bit by 20 years. So everything that we do is very typical of what Walton Road is going to need. Mm -hmm. A lot of work. And it's a big budget item. So if the, um, if the community approves local option taxes as part of the charter proposal, you know, one of the things that I think that um, would be on our stuff to do list is, is infrastructure repairs. We've got roads, we have sidewalks, we have bridges. So allocating money to do those to save taxpayers dollars on property taxes, you know, one of the options that we're looking at. So we are looking into the future in terms of how we can finance um, these uh, projects without having to go to the bank and pay interest on them. So we, we, there is a process that the board and the administration is looking at. Yeah. And there is still the AOT bridge, <coughs> bridge and culvert program, right? But it's pretty limited as to funds. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking a couple hundred. A couple of hundred? No, I mean, it's that they grant. They don't go that much higher, do they? No, they only go like 275 or something. Right. And you'll, you'll need like four times that money. Yeah. And, you know, your newest bridge is the one on Bridge Street, the little pony trucks. Okay. That's weathering steel. Okay, there's a catch 22 to weathering steel. It doesn't stop weathering in Vermont because you're throwing salt on it. And that's going to come due to haunt you as well. And those bridges can all be painted. And they will retain their paint. And it will look like the Cadiz Falls Bridge, where it would be a, a green bridge or a red bridge, whatever the mm -hmm. town decided they wanted for a finished color. But it's in the process of what we call delaminating because it it builds rust and then it falls off it's not supposed to fall off it's supposed to have a rusty color and it's supposed to stay that color because that was the whole idea behind this a588 steel this weathering steel uh, but we have the salt factor so you're recommending that we paint, paint them in order to stop the only that one only that one but that to one. stop the weathering yes and that will give us oh it'll buy you 30 years okay now do you typically have to sandblast it first oh yeah. yes yeah it's gonna be sandblasted white right and that's so you have to capture all that so none of that falls into the river as well, well you have to capture it but it doesn't have lead in it so it's not as big a deal as it used to be yeah. when you had to catch the lead paint which it all your okay. bridges have lead paint except for Cadiz falls it's already been plastic okay hmm. Thank you for that. That's good information. Thank you. So is there any other questions for the Cody's or Tyler? All right. Yes. Jerry. Just a comment about the weathering steel. Uh, weathering steel continues to weather as long as it's wet. That's why a lot of structures that use weathering steel at the bearings, which is the place where water usually gets in, uh, the first five feet is painted. It's usually painted brown, so that it's not noticeable. I don't know whether, what, okay, but is that where the, the scale's coming off? Oh no, you're getting, you're getting walked down. All over. Okay. Any other questions or thoughts? All right. Thank you very much. We look forward to having that work done. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. <clears throat> All right. Thanks. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Tyler. Um, under old business, uh, town manager search committee update. Um, 
So um, the uh, search committee um, has done uh, interviews for candidates. Um, the committee came to a conclusion of names to forward to the select board for uh, consideration. Um, Dominic uh, Cloud will be uh, the individual who he's led the search and he will be in to talk to the select board to discuss the candidates and setting up uh, interview dates for them as well. So I want to thank the committee. Um, it was a really good group of people to work with. Um, I think we accomplished a lot. We had over 100 applications. Dominic, um, I'll vet those down to um, quite a pile for us to review. Um, it was our job to uh, distill that down even further. And uh, I think the committee overall did a really exceptional job in um, not only the vetting process, but also the interview process. And we have some good candidates to, really good candidates to forward to the select board. So. All right. Any um, questions or anything? Yeah, Tom. I, I would just like to uh, double on that. I want to thank uh, Dominic for all the work that he put into it, and uh, Sarah Waterman and, and Nancy Banks, uh, Monty Mason, and Jamie Brusa. I really appreciate it. Sarah, all the work that you've done in this, and uh, Chris, you also, and, and Tina Sweet. This is a very big step for the town very important for the town <clears throat> and i know you all put a, a lot of work into it and but the town will benefit and we, we thank you for that right now yeah, thank you How are you um i can't really talk about okay. it at this point um <clears throat> we would have a motion to approve the warrants we'll make a motion to approve the warrants i'll second all right uh, motion a second is there any discussion all those in favor? Aye. Uh, that's unanimous. Um, community comments. Are there any community comments? Yeah, <coughs> James Brewster, Morristown. Um, so I've come before you before um, with concerns about executive session. Um, and so I'm here before you again with uh, not necessarily concern, but perhaps suggestions uh, regarding executive session. And I'll preface my comments by saying that um, what I'm basing this on um, is a document um, from Vermont League of Cities and Towns. This is not something that I came up with. Um, this, is, this is something that they put out there. Um, you're going into executive session tonight um, and you have in the minutes the motions that you know the script that could be read should be read prior to entering executive session uh, to me these two motions meet the bare minimum of the requirement the absolute minimum of what needs to be done to enter executive session now i believe morristown can do better uh, we can inform our residents uh, as best that we can and not just do the bare minimum. So based upon what I believe to be the executive session tonight, I have a suggestion for the two motions. Uh, instead of the motion, first motion that you have, I would suggest that it read, I move to go into executive session because I find that premature general public knowledge regarding the town search for a town manager would clearly place a person involved at a substantial disadvantage because of the release of confidential candidate information and that the select board risks disclosing its negotiation strategy if it discusses the interview process in public. I don't believe by that motion you've divulged any information that shouldn't be out there to the public. I would follow up with the second motion to say, I move to go into executive session to discuss the next phase of the town manager hiring process under the precision blah, 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 to include interim town manager, Carrie Johnson, consultant, Dominic Cloud. By reading those two motions, as I have suggested, you've provided more information to the public about what <clears throat> the nature of your discussion is going to be, but you have not divulged the details or anything secretive or anything that the public shouldn't know about. Executive session is not meant 
to hide things, hide the topic about what you're speaking about. The people have the right to know when it's appropriate and when you can what you're discussing. The details, the intimate details, maybe not so much. That I understand. So what I'm providing you here is a suggestion, a real world example of how this board could improve upon not just meeting the bare minimum of the requirements. So I'm gonna give this to Judy. If you choose to use it, it's here. It's an example for future executive sessions. I hope you'll consider it. Thank you. All right, thanks, Jamie. Any other community comments? Seeing none on the board, um, let's talk about our uh, schedule coming up. Uh, we have uh, Monday, April 1st at 4 p.m. Uh, select board special meeting at the Dual Hamill Pit. Um, that's in person only. Um, that is uh, a, a requirement by um, our permit to have um, that meeting, uh, I believe, at least once a year. Uh, we have uh, a select board meeting April 1st as well at 5.30 that would convene here in this building. And then Monday, April 15th, um, 5.30, but we've already talked about that. Are we going to, are you going to continue to have that uh, meeting on the 15th or are, you, are we going to do a different day? Because we've pushed uh, Jeff Carr and, and the um, Charter Committee to May 6th. Which is also a select board meeting, correct? It is, yeah. yeah. It is. So I think we're still going to have a regular select board meeting on the 15th. Okay. All right. Just not <clears throat> a charter yes. committee as well. Okay. April Maybe. Fools and Tax Day. Yeehaw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> For all sorts of fun in April. So that was just. It's dog license. It is. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so we knew there was else. <laughs> register. We'd like you to register your dogs before April 1st. Yes, that would be good. No kidding. <clears throat> And just for the record, uh, dog number one is already registered. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Through a raffle. Through process. a raffle, yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> so no questions on the schedule. Um, is there any other business before we make motions to go into executive session? Um, I think at this point tonight, we'll certainly take that under consideration, Tom and Jamie, uh, for future, but I don't think that we're in a position where we want to debate that. Um, that, I think that certainly we want legal counsel to uh, weigh in on any changes that we're going to make uh, in terms of have, and have the board, a full board here to discuss that as well. Okay. So we appreciate the suggestion, Jamie. So uh, we would entertain a motion to go into executive session. Um, well, I was gonna, I'm just, um, I'm so used to talking to so I've forgotten that it's an actual motion. It is. Uh, we gave you the click. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. I move to go into executive session because I find, it, find that the premature general public knowledge would clearly place a person involved at substantial disadvantage. Is there a second? Second. All right, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. That's unanimous. I move to go into executive session to discuss the appointment of a public officer subject to T1 VSA 13 A3 to include interim town manager, Carrie Johnson and consultant, Dominic Cloud. I will second. All right, uh, no discussion. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right, that's unanimous as well, Judy. All right, you're officially in executive session.